Hi everyone, thanks for coming along tonight. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is quite different from the other topics uh, in terms of talking about social and talking, talking about content. Google AdWords is all about advertising and it's about paid advertising. A lot of um, the other presentations tonight are things that you can do and invest your own time in um, and not necessarily have to lay out dollars for. This is very much um, in the paid space. So what is AdWords? Um, and Roger will hopefully give you a good overview of what that is tonight. Um, it's targeted and measurable online advertising that drives visits to your website. So when we say it's targeted, um, you can select geographic areas that you want to um, target to. You can select time of day. You can select day of week. Uh, you can select demographics depending on what types of um, advertising you're doing. And, and you can dr really drill down into specifics of who you're targeting your advertising to through AdWords. Um, and when I say measurable, I'm talking about the fact that you can see details on what people have done um, after they've clicked on an ad, what they've done on your website, whether they've taken an action on your website that you want them to take, whether that's uh, calling you or submitting a contact form or providing you with a business lead. Um, and it's obviously online advertising. Most of what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is cost per click advertising. So that means you pay when somebody clicks on an ad. Uh, you can do uh, pay per impression advertising with Google AdWords, um, but we will just focus really on cost per click tonight. And the cost per click varies significantly. Um, when we're talking about search campaigns, if you're bidding on particular keywords that people might type into Google and you're wanting your ads to come up, uh, you can go anywhere from nine cents way up into the $10 mark for paying for a cost per click, depending on what kind of uh, industry you're bidding against, uh, what your keyword is, um, and how relevant your ad and your website content is to those keywords that you're bidding on. So um, we'll talk about budgets a little bit uh, later as we go on. One of the great things about AdWords is that you're in control. You're in control of your budgets, you're in control of your targeting, um, you can even get down to what type of device you want your ads to show on and, and what device you don't want them to show on. Um, the scheduling we mentioned before and also exclusions. So uh, you can put into your account negative keywords so uh, your ads aren't showing up for particular phrases um, and also negative website placements if you're doing uh, Google Display network advertising. Um, and account access as well. It's something you have full control over, so you can have various people managing your accounts with various permission levels. So targeted, measurable, and uh, you're in control. I just want to take you through very quickly some of the different ad formats that we can uh, do in Google AdWords. So the first one that we're looking at at the top there is something you'd all be familiar with uh, in search. So uh, for instance, someone may well have typed in running shoes or buy running shoes and come up with this runner shop ad up here. Um, display advertising is different in that it's not coming up in search results, it's coming up on websites that uh, have been targeted because they may well have content that's relevant to the advertising, um, maybe a particular website that that advertiser has selected to uh, display their ads on um, and can be targeted in terms of topics and, and interests and, and demographics as well. So display ads are what you see on websites that are opted into the Google Display Network of which there are around 2 million. Video ads uh, you can do through Google as well. Um, so they can be through YouTube and also the Google Display Network. And there's a range of different formats. Uh, the graphic that we've got there is a video ad that shows up on the right-hand column when you're in YouTube watching uh, a video. But you can also do uh, pre-roll ads that are those ones that you have to watch before you can get to the content that you want to. Or you, you know, you're waiting those five seconds before you can click the skip ad button. Um, and an in-display ad is, is what we've got up there. Uh, again, you can have a wide range of uh, ways that you can target your ads for video. And then shopping ads, which are tied into a Google Merchant Center account. If you have uh, an e-commerce site that has an inventory uh, with Google Merchant Center, you can have your actual products and prices and your store come up uh, as a Google Shopping ad, which is an example there on the right-hand side. And mobile ads. Mobile ads can, um, ads can show up on mobile for search ads, for display ads, and also within mobile apps. 
So there's a few uh, ways that ads will show up in, in mobile devices and um, a wide, wide variety of our clients at the moment uh, just in their normal website stats would have 50% or more of their users accessing their website through their mobile device, whether that's a tablet or a phone. Um, so it's really important not to forget about mobile when you're setting up Google AdWords campaigns. So why choose Google? Very simple answer to this question. 95% market share in Australia. If you're advertising to Australians and you're wanting to do online advertising, Google is the way to go. If you are um, advertising to other international markets, you may that skew may change significantly. Um, in the US, Yahoo and Bing have a much larger market share. Uh, so it's worthwhile looking into those, what the search engine market share is, depending on your geographic audience, if you're looking outside of Australia. But if you're in Australia, Google AdWords is the way to go. Now, I, I mentioned that you have control over your budgets in Google AdWords, and a lot of people come to me and they say, well, how much should I spend? The key here is not starting at how much should you spend, but really looking at your marketing overall looking at how much of your budget you have for marketing in a year, looking at what segment of that marketing budget you have for digital work, and then looking at what segment of that digital budget you have for AdWords. So AdWords might make up you know, one portion. You might have budget allocated to search and SEO, um, to email marketing, to social, to developing content. There's a wide range of things there. So start with the money that you have. The beauty of AdWords is you can run a campaign, you know, anywhere from three, four, five dollars a day if you like. Uh, we manage campaigns that, that run on budgets like that, and um, anywhere up to, you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars a day. It's really up to you, um, and you can work out what your scheduling is and, and how you want to allocate those budgets in time as well. How to get started. If you don't have an AdWords account, that's the place to be. Um, you'll need a Google account to do that. Uh, and what I would recommend is that if you have any other Google products relating to your business, like uh, analytics, webmaster tools, a Google My Business page, if you've got a Google Plus page for your business, try to use the same login that you use for those as you do when you're setting up your Google uh, AdWords account, because you can link all of those together to give you uh, a more powerful advertising message and to give you more space in your ads and we'll touch on that slightly later. Do take care when you're setting up an AdWords account because there are some settings that can't be changed at a later date. Uh, they include your geographic, um, sorry, your, your time zone and the currency. So just take a little bit of care if you're going and doing that. And the next most important thing to do is establish your goals because depending on what your goal is for your advertising, that will, that will strictly guide what type of AdWords campaign you set up. So if website traffic is important to you, um, you really just want clicks to your website, then a search campaign is going to be a good solution for that. If you're wanting phone call inquiries or email leads or is it purchasing that's important to you, that might be a Google Shopping um, campaign if you have a Google Merchant Centre account attached to your e-commerce site. Uh, if you're looking at brand awareness down the bottom there, it might be that you do a brand campaign on the Google Display Network where really you're just trying to get your name and your, um, and your logo and, and your brand out there. Uh, and that might be done in combination with a range of different online and offline um, advertising that you're doing at the one time. So think about really what it is that you're trying to achieve. Um, you don't want to go into AdWords just, I want to be in AdWords. You really need to have a goal to make it work for you as, as best as possible. I'm going to take you through um, just a few tips, really top line information about good keywords and, and good ads. Um, when you're trying to generate keywords, we're talking about Google Ads um, for search here. You want to think about the terms that you have on your website because Google will search your website and make sure that the keywords that you're bidding on are relevant to the content that you have on your website. And that affects how much you pay for those clicks because if you're bidding on words that are vastly irrelevant to the content you have on your site, Google judges that as not being a good answer to someone who's searching for a particular topic and you pay more to uh, display, to have an ad click. Um, so. Terms that you use on your website is a really good place to start for keywords. 
terms your customers commonly use. Um, I know a lot of us fall into the trap of jargon and phrasing that um, our customers don't necessarily use when they're talking about us. So think about it from the customer perspective and use those phrases because they're the people who are going to be searching for your product or service. Um, look at what organic search phrases are currently uh, triggering organic clicks through to your website through Google search. Um, we used to be able to rely on Google Analytics for this, but it doesn't give us that information since um, they've uh, encrypted sec security on their search uh, phrases. So Webmaster Tools is somewhere that you can go back within 90 days and look at um, some data of what people have typed into Google or search engines to bring up your website as a natural search as opposed to a paid search where it's an ad that they're clicking. Don't forget your negative keywords. Um, I mentioned that uh, just a little while ago, we have a client um, whose business name is Saltbush and they have nothing to do with the plant Saltbush. They're not a nursery. They don't have anything to do with plants. Um, and so we have to make sure we have a lot of negative keywords in their account so that they're coming up for the IT security services that they provide as opposed to uh, Saltbush Nursery. So think about those things when you're setting up your keywords so that you're not potentially triggering ads and potentially getting clicks for something that's irrelevant to your business. Good ads. Um, what you need to think about with search campaigns in Google is making everything incredibly relevant to each other. So you want a keyword that is going to be reflected in your ad content and you want that keyword to also be reflected in the page that you're driving traffic to. So it's really important to use your highest performing keywords in your headline if you can. That's what people are looking at first um, and, and that's what's going to compel them to click on your ad and visit your website. So. Um, here we have an example uh, which is just a really little trick. We've got a full stop at the end of this line here. If you put a closing punctuation mark on your second line of text, when you have an ad in the top position, one, two and three at the top of your search results, it, if you have closing punctuation on the end of that line, it will turn it into a nice big long line which gives you a little bit more real estate on the page in AdWords. So there's a few little tips and tricks that you can pick up like that as you go along. Much more important to have the right kind of message in your ad but there are little things like that that you can do. Offers and pricing work really well in Google AdWords. Um, people want some kind of compelling reason to click on your ad and visit your website. So um, uh, uh, free shipping, save 35% save $35 percent, that's really not very good, <laughs> um, and use calls to action. You want to be telling people specifically what it is that you want them to do. Do you want them to ring you? Do you want them to book something? Um, do you want them to get a quote? It's also really important once you've uh, created your ad in Google to actually look at it from a visual perspective, what it looks like on page, because this ad is going to be amongst uh, at least six other ads, five or six other ads, as well as all of the organic search results that are going to come underneath it in a Google search results page. So just make sure it looks attractive, make sure that your sentence um, case and your capitals is, is correct and that, you, that there aren't any typos and things like that. Okay, this is the AdWords golden rule. AdWords will get people to your website, but your website must convert them to take an action that you want them to take. And this is where the power of your website comes in. So there's no point paying for Google advertising if your website's not going to get them to do something to generate business for you. It's just money down the drain. So it's really important to um, have goals in mind and to have actions that you want people to take after they've clicked on an ad. Some of the really top line basics for generating conversions on your website um, are relevant landing pages. I talked about the relevance of your keywords to the content in your ad, to the content on your page. Don't just drive people to the home page of your website when you're doing advertising. If I go and do a search for women's shoes, I don't want to arrive at a page which has 
a whole range of categories to choose from. I don't want to arrive at a page that's got men's clothes, women's clothes, women's accessories, handbags. I want to arrive at a women's shoes page. So be careful about what, where you're actually directing those ad clicks that you're paying for. On your website, have that clear call to action. Make it obvious for people. Um, have your phone number nice and clear. Include contact forms if that's what you're trying to do. Um, have your shopping cart right up there if you're an e-commerce site or a booking button. And use good navigation and don't just have navigation in one area. Have lots of different ways that people can reach the same place because people navigate in different ways. I'm getting a wind up. And set up conversion tracking. Uh, you can do this through analytics. Um, and this is how AdWords can be really powerful because you can set up tracking within your analytics account to measure who is clicking on an ad and then taking one of the actions that you've set up. So um, there's a little bit of uh, technical setup required there, but really important for the best clarity as to how well AdWords is working for your business. So this is just an example, women's shoes. Um, it's a bit of a theme tonight. So I've searched for women's shoes and I've come to a women's shoes page. It's exactly where I want. There's a very clear call to action, sign up, get a $10 voucher. Shop now. Um, we've got a clear messaging about delivery, um, free returns. We've got a Google trusted store icon down here. All these different things that are making me feel confident about taking action on your website. So really keep that in mind and make sure your website is working for you before you invest any money in paid advertising. Reporting and measuring success. Um, AdWords is not a set and forget activity. This is something that you can be continually improving on and, and working to your advantage. Uh, so you should be checking in on your campa campaigns regularly to track their performance and try to get them um, get them working better for you. You can automate reports so they come into your inbox. You can do that on a weekly or daily or monthly basis, however you prefer. Um, and make sure you're matching that performance against the goals that you've set up when you've started your campaigns in the first place. And test different approaches. It's really flexible and um, you, can, you can use AdWords to your advantage in, in a number of different ways. There is excellent help online. Um, if you're looking at setting up your own AdWords campaign, there's lots of um, training sessions on YouTube and, and uh, in the support forums for Google. Uh, and if you're looking for a person to actually help you, you can go to google.com.au partners, forward slash partners, and find someone who's uh, a certified Google AdWords provider. So that you, even if you just do that for getting your account set up and, and you take on ongoing management of that, that can sometimes be a smart way to go. There we go, 15 minutes, done. <laughs> Thanks very much.